because it's truly um, one of the only scientifically valid tools that we can have in every practice that will give us absolute repeatable data um, on the autonomic nervous system. While it is a, a heart exam, what it truly is, is a window to look through to see how the body is being controlled and coordinated by the autonomic nervous system. And to my way of thinking, that is the foundation for all biophysics based, in fact, I think all health, wellness, and, and uh, medical intervention. And so without further ado, let's get into the numbers. Um, HRV analysis, what we're looking to do here among our group, whether you have the technology or not, is to establish a step-by-step -step logic for numerical analysis of this particular heart rate variability. We follow a, pa a pattern or process in our clinic that I think is a, a pretty reasonable model. And uh, you heard my biophysics lecture when we talked about measuring twice and cutting once. And so we start our intake with data collection and analysis. We do our intake examination um, and a baseline heart rate variability. We take our case history and do our physical examination. I do EAV testing and some product selection or modality selection. I may choose to do uh, energetic medicine. I may do homotoxicology. I may do physical treatment. I may do nutrition. Whatever intervention you choose to do, choose, pick one and do it. Um, I then communicate whatever treatment or dosage and uh, information I am and actually uh, give an initial dosage or treatment. If it's a physical modality, I'll I'll lay for them or use a Vazia or whatever. I'll then allow anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes for the um, autonomic system, for the nervous system to either react to the nutritional or to the anti-homotoxic therapy or to the physical therapy. And um, then we'll re-examine with an HRV. That's how you get to do thousands and thousands of them. You do two and three on a patient when you see them. Uh, and I take my post re exam and compare and contrast the two studies. And as I said in my earlier lecture, what can happen? Three things. They get better, they get worse, they stay the same. If you're afraid of, of, of making somebody worse and then knowing about it on the same day that you do it, it's not a mistake until you can't fix it. Okay? Think about it. You know, every day, physician therapists all over the planet make clinical errors in judgment because it's an art. We're trying to add a little science to the art. And so we, we apply our art, and then we say, well, what happened? Could you, could you tolerate the therapy? Wow, it made you a lot better. We're going to keep doing that. It didn't do much, so it could be the right therapy, but it didn't have a big impact on you now. It could have underdosed you or whatever. Uh, or, especially in the case of um, detoxification processes, um, a lot of times you can get an early adverse reaction. The person just can't handle it. They're not ready for the therapy. However well-intentioned or absolutely clinically correct it may be, it doesn't mean get off that horse and don't do that therapy, what it means is go real easy or start with a little drainage first or change your uh, modus operandi, but if it, if it pulls them down too hard, if they don't have the resources to give to the healing response, you have to move them in a different direction. You have to understand, my practice is a far-flung practice. I have people come from all over to see me, very often out of state and sometimes out of the country. So. I don't, have, I don't have the opportunity to see them back the next week or the following, you know, in two weeks and see how things are going. I have to make, I have to learn how to make a lot of decisions that are going to last for six, eight weeks, sometimes three months at a time. And so this human physiology over here is extremely exhausted in a temporal mode. So the 1 to 13 is how do I feel today? And the 1 to 7 is what's my reserve capacity? 
what's the depth of my charge on the battery? If you put me on a treadmill and started walking me, who do you think is going to be able to walk longer? This one here or this one here? I would suggest to this person, don't run through the airport.